Hi guys, uh, Doug at uh, BudgetAstro.net, uh, my uh, imaginary website. I've uh, been away for a while, uh, sorry about that. Uh, it's been a few months since I've uploaded one of these, but uh, I've had to deal with loads of uh, crap. You don't want to know, don't ask. Um, the website, uh, yeah, the website. Um, it's going to be a blog. Uh, I hope within the next, I don't know, a few weeks to get something up. Um, just uh, one sort of blog at a time, I suppose. Um, I haven't got time to do a proper website, so uh, it will be there. Uh, patience, patience, and uh, I will. Uh, I'll get it up and running soon. I promise. Now, this uh, tutorial is um, star masking. Um, if you've uh, done this before, uh, created a layer mask to uh, protect your stars whilst you perform different functions, uh, stretching or noise reduction or whatever, um, then you won't want to watch this one. Um, but uh, for those of you that uh, haven't. Uh, it's a very useful technique for um, keeping your stars under control. Uh, you may have noticed if you've done uh, some processing in the past that uh, when you stretch the image, particularly if you've got an awful lot of stars in the frame, um, they tend to dominate the image. They uh, get completely out of control and uh, uh, and they just make it look a little bit messy. Uh, so this technique, uh, and there are other techniques that uh, I'll hopefully do a video on fairly soon, um, will uh, will help you control that. Now the image you see on the screen at the moment is um, the uh, Gamma Cygni Nebula in um, Cygnus. Uh, that's the uh, area of nebulosity around the star Sadia, S-A-D-R, uh, which is the uh, middle one. Um, turn right at Deneb, uh, and that'll take it to Sadia. Um, nice uh, area, um, but shed loads of stars, as you can see. Uh, now this image um, I've cropped and uh, I've taken out a gradient, I use gradient exterminator, I've got away of it in this case um, and uh, I've used levels just to bring up the black point um, and that's all I've done uh, so you know that uh, makes the stars more evident uh, and you can see a little bit of nebulosity or I can certainly see it, I don't know whether you can see it on your screen um, but uh, we're going to create a, a mask and um, paste this image into it and then invert it uh, and then we're going to use that uh, mask to uh, protect the stars while we stretch this image uh, and uh, you'll, you'll see the results. Now before we do that I'm going to um, do a normal stretch on this image without a star mask just to show you um, what would happen if you weren't uh, masking the stars. Uh, I'm going to do this on the background layer which we shouldn't do as you know. We should use adjustment layers for things like that but uh, I don't know ways to be honest, but uh, if I show you the right way to do it, you can then decide whether you want to do it the wrong way. Um, so, uh, image adjustment curves, or Control M, that'll bring up curves. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is put a point where, for the uh, for the sky, the dark sky, because we don't want that to, uh, uh, I don't want to stretch that, it will be too noisy. Uh, and if you use the, uh, well, I click around first of all, 29, that'll do, about there. Uh, and use Control click, and that'll put a point on the line at 29. I'm going to bring it down one, 28. Uh, now, if we move the move the curve up above that point, uh, the curve below the point will go down, and we don't want that to happen because the sky the sky will go totally black. So I'm going to put a point in there just to uh, anchor it, so to speak, and then a point above, and give that an almighty stretch, which I wouldn't normally do. I wouldn't normally do a stretch of this nature. Um, bring it down a tad because we've uh, clipped the white point there, and that'll do us. Preview it on off. Okay, that'll do. Click OK. Uh, and that's what it would look like. Obviously, you'd be doing a lot more processing on it than that, but uh, just, just uh, you know, a stretch and uh, shows you the uh, the effect that the stars have. Okay, now I'm going to uh, duplicate this image. Uh, image duplicate. Click OK to that. And that gives us an exact copy of this image, which we'll come back to later when we uh, compare before and after. I'll just uh, zoom into that a little bit and make it the same. There you go. Okay. Now what we need to do now is just reverse that step, um, take out the curves, okay there we go, went into history to do that, not if you noticed, uh, back one to open, I think I've gone through this before if you've watched my previous videos, um, back to layers, <coughs> and there we are, we're ready to uh, create a star mask now. Now the first thing we need to do is duplicate the background, you can't uh, you can't create a mask on the background, uh, so if I just uh, left click on that, drag it down to that button there, and that duplicates the background. And then we're going to put a mask in there, which is this button here. Click. Hopefully you saw that. And that, uh, and that creates a mask. Now that mask is selected at the moment. It's got a black ball around it, which means it's selected. Um, okay. Now the first thing we want to do is make the um, the image uh, active. Click on the image. Uh, and then I'm going to copy the image and paste it into the uh, into the mask. So if you do Control A, 
that will select the entire image uh, control C that will copy the entire image and then if you bring your mouse over to the mask here uh, and do alt click uh, and that will bring up the mask on your screen now if you do control V that will paste the image into the mask as you can see and you should also be able to see that it's uh, black and white monochrome grayscale whatever you want to call it uh, that's because it's a mask now if you uh, know about masks um, you'll know that um, the black areas of the mask um, are protected uh, and the white areas um, any adjustments you make in this layer will show through the white areas um, I think it's black black conceals white reveals or some such thing to help you remember that um, you could well get them the wrong way around I suppose but I'm a... um, so yeah basically uh, any black areas of the mask the action you perform in this layer won't show through but the white areas will now if you look at this mask at the moment it's the wrong way around uh, because the stars are white so uh, if we were to stretch this image we'd be stretching the stars uh, and the background is black uh, so we need to invert this uh, and the way to do that is control I that would invert it alternatively up here image oh, image adjustments uh, and invert down there control I that would invert it as well there you go uh, hit it and it goes back uh, control I again uh, so uh, this is uh, this is the way we want the mask now looking at the mask the way it is now it's not uh, hugely impressive um, you can't see many stars um, so we're going to make an adjustment to the uh, mask make sure the mask is active here down here uh, it's got the uh, black box around it uh, and then bring up um, levels control L they'll bring up levels now it's the wrong way around from what you're used to that's because it's a mask and uh, it's mainly white instead of being mainly black so the uh, the largest number of pixels are at this end uh, and in order to bring, make these stars a bit blacker uh, we're going to just move the black point right up to the uh, histogram up there and that makes uh, a bit of a difference but uh, as you can see the background isn't very white at the moment so in order to make the background white which is the bit that we want to be white because we're going to do some stretching on it we'll bring the white point not the grey point the, you know the midpoint we're going to bring the white point over a bit until the entire background is white we don't want any nebulosity showing through um, that should do it that looks uh, reasonably good that's all stars okay click OK so that and that's our mask sorted now what I'd suggest you do here a um, bit of a tip is to uh, copy this mask um, so we've got the mask still selected in that layer got a black box around it so I'm going to do control control A to select it and control C um, and then I'm just going to select the image there and then do control V and that will create another layer with the mask uh, I'm going to switch that off just uh, click on the eyeball that will switch it off uh, and then go back to this layer um, and I'll explain why I've done that uh, in a second once we've done uh, once we've done a bit of stretching and what this top layer is here layer one uh, with the uh, uh, with the mask copy that's like a spare copy of the mask if you like um, and we may use that later uh, but what we're going to do for now go back to the uh, mask on the layer below alt click on the mask and that will bring the mask up and I'm just going to put a slight blur on this if we zoom in um, you'll see it's quite a I'll zoom in too far okay uh, it's quite sharp uh, and I want to put a, a, just a faint blur in those stars so if we go up to uh, filter blur Russian blur um, probably about just under one pixel I would have thought would do it oh that's probably a bit too much let's go down to 0.5 get up there okay that's it click on the preview button on and off just see what it looks like on and off that's off and that's on that'll do us click OK and that's the uh, that's the mask sorted now if we go back to the image click on the image there you go uh, and now I'm going to perform the same sort of stretch as we did before bring up the curves dialog box control M uh, put a point in at 28 I think we had it uh, that does uh, one below it and one above it I'll get that down get down there okay one above it and then put a nice big stretch in this which as I say I wouldn't normally do a stretch of that nature because my images are just too noisy bring that down a bit don't necessarily need to bring the white point down but there you go okay that does click OK 
Now, if we uh, compare before and after here, that's uh, with the mask, and this one is without the mask. With and without. Hopefully, you can see the difference. I hope so, otherwise, I'm wasting my time. Um, it does look a lot better. Uh, one thing you need to be careful here, I'm going to zoom into this image, if it will let me. Uh, computer runs slow when I've got a video running. Uh, forgive the noise, awful noise. Um, click that layer on and off. You want to be careful of halos around the stars. This ain't too bad. Um, it's not too bad at all, really. Um, if there are big halos around your stars, uh, that's why I actually saved uh, the mask here. Uh, because uh, you may need to put a sli slightly more of a blur, less of a blur, or whatever. Uh, so you can uh, make that mask active. Control A, Control C uh, to copy it. Uh, and then go back to this mask. Uh, alt click and then control V and that will paste the original mask back in again and then you can make a different uh, adjustment a different blur and it all should be fine you, You'll have to use your judgment on that what you think looks best uh, Now one other um, Technique for using a star mask or one other function you could use a star mask for is a uh, noise reduction um, I don't know if you if you I don't know what you use for noise reduction if you use anything at all. I use a uh, noise ninja uh, and um, it's, it's inclined to take the, a bit of the colour out of the stars and there's quite a lot of colour in these stars and I like to protect that if I can um, so if you create a star mask like this uh, and then perform your noise reduction uh, it will protect your stars and it will protect the colour um, if you do uh, use a star mask for, for doing noise reduction uh, it's sometimes a good idea to leave some of the nebulosity in the star mask don't bring the white point over too much uh, because generally the, uh, the, the brighter Bits of the image aren't quite as noisy as the background, uh, so you don't maybe you don't want to do too much noise reduction in those bits. Don't want to make them too sort of fuzzy. Um, so uh, yeah, noise reduction as well. And, and there's uh, there's other techniques you can do to protect your stars. There is a technique where you can actually take the stars out of the image, uh, put them in a separate layer, uh, and your DSO in a, in another layer, and then process the two separately. I'll do a tutorial on that later. It's quite a good uh, technique um, and uh, worth. Uh, well, it doesn't always work. You couldn't do it on this image. There's too many stars, but uh, but uh, you can certainly use it on some. Uh, now, what you do for me, if you were happy, is uh, flatten that bit, flatten that image. Uh, so it's right click in the background, uh, in that layer there. Right click, uh, flatten the image or merge down rather than flatten it, because we may want to keep that star mask there. Um, and obviously, there's a lot more processing to be done on this image. Um, so if you wanted to continue stretching, you might want to create another star mask. The stars look different now to what they did before. There's more of them. Uh, so you may want to create another star mask and, uh, and that will protect your stars even more. Uh, I'm not going to process the whole thing. It will take too long. But in the best uh, Blue Peter tradition, if I uh, show you uh, one I did earlier, file open. Uh, where are we? That one there. There we go. Now that's the uh, more or less finished image. I'm not overly impressed with that because it needs a bit more time. It's a bit blotchy. Um, but uh, that's uh, all the nebulosity brought out. Probably too much of it really. Uh, and the stars fairly well protected. So, um, you know, if I'd have done that without a star mask, you, the stars would have looked horrendous. Uh, so there you go. I'll close that down now. Alright guys, I hope you've uh, found that one useful, star masking. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be back soon with uh, another little gem. Alright, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye bye.